today we will study applications of ionic liquids in analytical chemistry. This is a completely new area for the students of graduation and undergraduation level and therefore, it needs a bit of introduction, but it is one of the most latest analytical tool that has been used in analytical chemistry and in analysis and therefore, I felt that an introduction to use of ionic liquids is a must. Ionic liquids, room temperature ionic liquids or ILS are gaining wide recognition as novel solvents in chemistry. Their application in analytical chemistry, especially in separating analytes is merited because the ionic liquids have some unique properties such as negligible vapor pressure, good thermal stability, tunable viscosity and miscibility with water and organic solvents as well as good extractability from various organic compounds and metal ions. This lecture gives a brief overview of the application of ionic liquids in analytical chemistry including sample preparation, chromatographic separation and detection. So, you understand that you know when we were talking about sample preparation, our main criteria was that the sample or the analyte should completely dissolve and come out of the matrix. And if there is a substance like for example, ionic liquids which has very good properties, very adaptable for good extraction, won't it be the ideal situation to use it? Yes, the answer is that this is just the ideal medium to extract the analyte. Why? Because it has very important properties, particularly it has negligible vapor pressure, it has good thermal stability that means, it does not dissociate or associate or um, uh, get any kind of decomposition. It has a viscosity which can be uh, you know manipulated or tunable viscosity and it is miscible in water and most of the organic solvents. Thus, it has a good extractability property for extracting both the organic compounds as well as metal ions. You know, we were looking at the separation processes and we looked at so many types of extraction processes and from one method to another method we were changing because the maximum amount of compound should come in the analyte. I mean the analyte should come in the solvent so that the extraction is most efficient and here is ionic liquids which can do the needful. Why consider ionic liquids? Ionic liquids are environmentally friendly alternatives to organic solvents for liquid liquid extractions, catalysis, separation and electrochemistry. So, they are expected to be environmentally friendly and therefore, they can be a good alternative for the use of these um, very um, not so liked uh, the organic solvents which have uh, volatile organic compounds or VOCs. The organic the ionic liquids will reduce or eliminate the related cost disposal requirement and hazards associated with volatile organic compounds. Now, if we uh, try to look at the various solvents that are normally used. For example, diethyl ether or dichloromethane which are the usual solvents for extraction, they are very volatile and therefore, they uh, there are hazards associated with these volatile solvents and in place of that if ionic liquids can be used there is an edge over 
because VOCs are very dangerous to handle and they are hazardous as well. The ability to fine tune the properties of the ionic liquid medium will allow selection of ionic medium to replace specific solvent in a variety of different processes. So, now ionic liquids actually can be chosen in such a manner that maximum you know analyte can be extracted from the medium and this selection can also replace some of the solvents which were traditionally used therefore, making the process a safe process. Now, ionic liquids if we try to take a brief overview, we will be able to understand it even better. Ionic liquids are usually associated with high temperature processes as ionic substances are often comprised of two very small ions with opposite electrical charges as the name suggests ionic liquid that means there will be ions and ions will always appear in pairs, but these pairs of positive and negative ions will be very small in uh, these ions are very small in size and with opposite electrical charges. The similar size and shape of these ions ensure that the electrical attraction between them is too is so strong that it requires an enormous amount of energy to make the ionic bond. A common salt melts at about 800 degrees centigrade. So, you see that if we try to look at a uh, uh, ionic liquid, these ionic liquids will be comprising of cation and anion which are of opposite charge and they are very small, but they form the ionic bond because of the electrostatic attraction. And if you take a simple example of sodium chloride common salt, it melts at 800 degrees centigrade. A high temperature molten salt would be an unsuitable solvent for heat sensitive organic molecules, but the melting point can be lowered by producing ionic liquids from bulky asymmetrical ions that can only loosely fit together as less of the ions attract forces are utilized due to their ill fitting nature the rest can attract and so dissolve other compounds. So, if we have similar sized ions the problem is that it melts at a very high temperature and that that high temperature it is possible that heat sensitive organic compounds may not uh, survive and they may uh, it may not be a suitable solvent for such compounds. However, if the there are bulky groups fitted then these ions are disproportionate and some of the attractive forces can be used to uh, dissolve the organic compounds. Ambient temperature or room temperature ionic liquids typically consist of a heterocyclic cation based on substituted imidazole or pyridine or an inorganic anion such as PF4, PF6 as shown in the next slide. So, the most common ionic liquids which exist in room at room temperature are either imidazole or pyridine and they have an anion which could be PF6. Now, typically N-butyl pyridinium ion can be the typical cation of ionic liquids or 1-alkyl 3-methyl imidazolium or 1-3-dialkyl imidazolium cations are the common cations that are very typical of ionic liquids. Anions for the room temperature liquid uh, ionic liquids PF6 minus for moisture stable water immiscible ionic liquids BF4 minus for moisture stable, but water 
miscible ionic liquids depending on the ratio of ionic liquid to water system temperature and alkyl chain length in the cation. One can modify these anions. Less common anions are the triflate, the non efflate, bis triflyl and so on, trifluoroacetate and heptafluorobutanate. So, these are some of the other anions. So, since ionic liquids will have cation and anion, cation and anion must be so chosen that they are not interfering with the analyte and therefore, wherever moisture stable uh, ionic liquids have to be prepared, PF 6 minus is the choice, but it is water immiscible. So, if water immiscible compounds have to be extracted, then PF 6 is the ideal anionic choice, but wherever water miscibility is possible, BF 4 minus can be used, but however, there are other anions also which can be chosen. The structure of 1 butyl 3 methyl imidazolium hexafluorophosphate. Now, this is a particular uh, ionic liquid where there is a cation and there is an anion which is hexafluorophosphate is the anion and 1 butyl 3 methyl imidazolium is the cation with the positive charge. Now, ionic liquids are like uh, heat transfer fluids. A specific application of ionic liquids as heat transfer fluid is an electric is in electric plant power plant using solar collector to technology. So, you see they have great use not only in the extraction of organic compounds or inorganic uh, metals, but they also have a role and a specific application as heat transfer fluids, particularly in electrical power plant where solar collector technology is being used. Such plants collect solar energy by circulating a heat transfer fluid and then transferring the heat to an exchanger. Steam is generated in the exchanger, almost 14 to 18 megawatt capacity range of power is attained. So, just by the use of the ionic liquid, appropriate ionic liquid, heat can be transferred from the solar uh, energy, it can be transferred to an exchanger and then the exchanger then generates steam and almost uh, uh, you know uh, heat energy or power of the order of 14 to 18 megawatt capacity can be attained. Now, let us try to look at some more properties of room temperature ionic liquids. Why I am emphasizing on ionic liquids is that it is one of the most recent advancement in analytical chemistry. And as a part of this course, I thought that introducing you all to this particular topic of ionic liquids will give you an insight of the advancement that has really taken place and how for a variety of purpose, not only analytical chemistry, the ionic liquids play a very, very important role in extraction, separation and so on. Room temperature ionic liquids resulting from the combination of organic cations and various anions that may be liquids at room temperature are salts with melting point of below 100 degrees. Some ionic liquids are liquids at over 400 degrees and some as low as minus 96 degrees centigrade. So, you see that the range of their existence as ionic liquids can be ranging from temperature minus 96 to 400 degrees centigrade. But ideally, the ones which are most popularly used are 
are in the range of 100 degrees. The ionic liquids mostly comprise of organic 1 alkyl 3 methyl imidazolium, N alkyl pyridinium, tetra alkyl ammonium, and tetra alkyl phosphonium cations. So, these are the four varieties of cations that one would come across most popularly when one is looking at the room temperature ionic liquids. What are these uh, different ionic liquids? We will take a look at it once again. 1 alkyl 3 methyl imidazolium, 1 alkyl pyridinium, tetra alkyl ammonium and tetra alkyl phosphonium cations are the most common cations. The anions are either organic or inorganic including hexafluorophosphate, tetrafluoroborate, trifluoromethyl sulfonate bis trifluoromethyl sulfonyl amide, trifluoroethanoate and uh, acetate, nitrate, halide. These are various types of anions that are used to make the liquid uh, ionic liquids. Now, here are some of the examples shown pictorially the same thing which I have just uh, told you most commonly used cations are 1 alkyl 3 methyl imidazolium, N alkyl pyridinium, tetra alkyl ammonium and tetra alkyl phosphonium. This we just took a look at it. Some of the uh, possible anions which are water insoluble and uh, slowly they move towards the soluble ions. So, depending on the solubility factor the choice of anion can be made. It can be um, PF6 minus or it can be BF4 minus or it can be CH3CO2 minus that is the acetate. Similarly, we have different other types of sulfonates and nitrates and we can have also halides like bromide, chloride, iodides. Most commonly used alkyl chains are ethyl, butyl, hexyl, octyl and decyl. Physical chemical properties of ionic liquids because the entire functionality would depend on the physico chemical properties of the ionic liquids and this depends on the nature and size of both their cations and anion constituent. Obviously, whatever is the cation and whatever is the anion which is making a combination to make the ionic liquid will generate its own physico chemical properties. Their application in analytical chemistry especially in separating analytes is merited because the ionic liquids have some very unique properties such as negligible vapor pressure, good thermal stability, tunable viscosity and miscibility with water and organic solvents as well as good extractability for various organic compounds and ion metal ions illustrates some of the physico chemical properties of the ionic liquids commonly used in the analytical chemistry. Now, why the choice of specifically using the, uh, the this particular cation 1 alkyl 3 methyl imidazolium or N alkyl pyridinium is because there ha it must have a property which will enhance the miscibility or the extractability of the analyte. Otherwise, why should one use liquid uh, ionic liquids at all in analytical chemistry? So, the fact that these liquids uh, ionic liquids came into use or were introduced into analytical chemistry itself is a significance that it must have an added advantage. And when such a cation and a chosen anion is taken, it is to see what kind of compound has to be extracted. If it is an organic compound, then water miscibility is not desirable. So, such a combination of cation and anion will be taken up as shown in this previous slide where I had shown that wherever the water miscibility has to be um, enhanced 
the borate has has to be taken tetrafluoroborate if the organic compound has to be extracted then it is the hexa uh, phosphate fluorophosphate that needs to be taken into account so therefore these properties these physical properties are already like well designed uh, one can make a tailor made ionic liquid for a specific extraction and that is the beauty of uh, its use in analytical chemistry. Now, how does the separation process actually take place? Let us try to look and understand. Simple method for separation due to water immiscibility. For example, if palladium 2 compound in BMIM borate, tetrafluoroborate catalyze the hydro dimerization of 1,3-butadiene. Now, this reaction has been conducted and at 5 degrees centigrade in the aqueous and uh, in presence of ionic liquid product now is insoluble in ionic liquid and 97 percent of the palladium catalyst is retained in the ionic liquid. So, what happens? The uh, the, cat the catalyst remains 97 percent in the ionic liquid whereas, the product goes into the aqueous. So, that is how they are separated. While the reaction is taking place because of water immiscibility of the new compound uh, or of the catalyst, the product goes into the aqueous layer whereas, the catalyst remains with the ionic liquid. Room temperature ionic liquid as alternative to volatile organic solvents for liquid liquid extraction. One example of that has been taken benzene and derivatives partition to this uh, BMIM PF 6 from aqueous phase and may be selected. So, if such a situation is taken where uh, hydroxybenzoic acid and uh, dibenzoic acid both prefer to be in ionic liquids at pH below 2. And therefore, the ammonium compound that will be present or will if, if, if that is present and that has to be separated, the ammonium uh, or the aniline prefers to be in the ionic liquid at pH which is above 10. Therefore, by preference we can see where the acids will come, what should be the pH of the aqueous solution, so that they can be separated. Uh, if the acids have to be separated aromatic acids and similarly, the, uh, the amino compounds or the anilines can be separated by simply monitoring the pH. Use of ionic liquid in extraction. We just try to understand and look how they are once they can be separated. You understood that the choice of ionic liquid or the pH of the ionic liquid can be a good measure or parameter to control the type of compound that has to be separated. Similarly, the ionic liquids also have a role to play in extraction. Ionic liquids have negligible vapor pressure and non inflammability as well as good solubility for inorganic and organic compounds. They are therefore, useful in liquid liquid extraction, liquid phase micro extraction and liquid phase and solid phase micro extraction that is SPME. So, you will see that what we had learnt in the previous extraction lecture is still applicable for ionic liquids and for the such uh, ionic liquid separation processes can be applied to liquid liquid extraction. They can be also applied in uh, micro extraction where liquid phase micro extraction can be utilized or they can be even used in the examples of solid phase micro extraction. 
So, they have great versatility whether it is a simple you know aqueous and uh, ionic liquid or organic um, uh, solvent and ionic liquid that liquid liquid extraction also can take place in the case of li uh, liquid phase micro extraction that is LPME it is applicable and so it is applicable for solid phase micro extraction or SPME. When we try to see more in detail as to how this uh, ionic liquid actually works in liquid liquid extraction. Uh, use of ionic liquid in liquid liquid extraction that is LLE was first shown by Daya et al. First reported a very highly efficient process or procedure for extraction of strontium from aqueous phase into dye substituted imidazolium hexafluorophosphates and bis trifluoromethyl sulfonyl amides by using dicyclohexanol 18 crown 6 as extractant. So, you see crown ether was used as an extractant and two different types of cations that is imidazolium di substituted imidazolium hexafluorophosphate or bis trifluoromethyl sulfonyl amide was used along with the crown ether dicyclohexanol 18 crown 6. Ionic liquids were also applied to extract various organic compounds including substituted benzene derivatives, biofuels, erythromycin A in bioprocesses process operation from aqueous solution. So, it is not that ionic liquids are only meant for inorganic compounds like the strontium example that we discussed. They are also very good and applicable for the extraction of various aromatic compounds that is benzene derivatives which are substituted. They can be extracted with the help of uh, ionic liquids, biofuels can be extracted, erythromycin A can also be extracted from the bioprocesses and therefore, it is more versatile. It is, it is not uh, just specific to organic compounds or inorganic compounds, but it also can be applied to the biological system for extraction of very specific compounds. How is uh, ionic liquid then applied in liquid phase micro extraction? Liquid phase micro extraction, we have learned quite in detail about this extraction process because it is a ha it has an edge over liquid liquid extraction and it is like miniaturization where very small quantities have to be extracted. Extraction solvents for drop based liquid phase micro extraction of polyaromatic hydrocarbons that is PAH followed by liquid chromatography that is LC determination can be brought about with the help of ionic liquids. The unique properties of non-volatility, adequate viscosity and miscibility with water allow these ionic liquids to be conveniently dropped as, construction, as extraction solvents in both direct immersion and headspace LPME. So, you see that the advantage of using ionic liquids in the LPME extraction liquid phase micro extraction is for compounds like PAH which are in micro quantities or trace quantities. So, very small quantities are required and it is because the uh, ionic liquids have very unique properties. They are non-volatile and have adequate viscosity and they can be they are immiscible to water and therefore, they just adapt according to the process required. It can both be direct immersion or with the head uh, head space attachment of the head space. So, the adaptability with ionic liquids is that it can be used in many ways. And as per the requirement of the analyte, it can be adapted. 
compared to one octanol, a large volume drop of uh, C8MIM PF6 can be suspended and it survives for a longer extraction time in the tip of a micro syringe. Therefore, higher enrichment factor for polyaromatic hydrocarbons can be reached. So, what it is done? It is like a probe and the probe has at the end a large volume uh, drop of uh, this particular ionic liquid which is uh, uh, hexafluorophosphate uh, and because of that uh, ionic liquid's presence the higher and higher amount of PAH goes and attaches there. So, it is separated and it is just hold, uh, held at the tip of the micro syringe. So, even the uh, you know adaptability on the liquid phase micro extraction is very very facile when ionic liquids are used. How are now ionic liquids also applicable in chromatographic techniques such as GC? Ionic liquids possess many favorable properties such as non-volatility, non-flammability, good solubility of many compounds, high viscosity and polarity that makes them unique stationary phase in GC. By using two typical ionic liquids such as the C4 MIM PF6 and C4 MIM chloride as stationary phases for GC. Armstrong et al studied interactive and retentive behavior of various compounds with ionic liquids. It was observed that ionic liquid stationary phase seem to have a dual nature. They are capable of separating polar compounds as if they are polar stationary phases and non-polar compounds as if they are non-polar stationary phases. So, C4 MIM chloride interacted much more strongly with the proton donor and acceptor molecules, while the C4 MIM PF6 tended to interact more strongly with the nonpolar solutes. So, you see that even in GC and in the chromatographic separation techniques, the ionic liquid as stationary phase can act beautifully in the separation process. Why? Because they have this unique property that they are non-volatile, non-flammable, they are good, they have good solubility, very high viscosity and they have a certain polarity which matches the polarity with the analyte. So, if the stationary phase or the column is filled with such ionic liquids such as C4 MIM chloride and C4 MIM hexafluorophosphate, they have the tendency for choosing the most polar and the most non-polar analyte and therefore, they are most ideally suited for separation of both the types of compounds uh, on the same GC. How is ionic liquid then again useful in liquid chromatography? We saw that it is useful in gas chromatography. The ionic liquids of the type imidazolium cation can interact with the silanol group and compete with the polar group of the analytes for the silanol group on the alkyl silica surface in an LC liquid chromatography column. Therefore, it can effectively shield residual silanols and improve the peak shape while also decreasing the retention time of the analytes. He et al studied the liquid chromatographic behavior of four basic compounds nor uh, epidurine, pseudoepidurine and methyl epidurine on C18 column with imidazolium based liquid ionic liquids added to the eluent at pH 3. The addition of the ionic liquids could decrease band tailing, reduce band broadening and improves resolution. Several ionic liquids were compared as eluent additives such as C4 MIM, BF4 seems to be the best. Furthermore, the imidazolium based uh, 
ionic liquids were demonstrated to be compatible with C18 column. So, what it was done? The column was C18, but the eluent had the ionic liquid. So, that had the property to separate the norephedrine, ephedrine, pseudoephedrine and methyl ephedrine very effectively, because they all uh, differ in their polarities and it was possible to separate all of them with the help of these ionic liquids. And ionic liquids chosen from the four or five categories that I had mentioned found, were found to be quite good in making these separations very effective and the pH also was maintained very well at 3 pH. So, that the, the addition of ionic liquid added one more advantage the peaks became narrower because the separation was very effective. There was no band tailing and there was no band residue band broadening, which are usually the problem when such interrelated or very similar structured compounds are separated. They tend to come together, but by the addition of these ionic liquids, the resolution improved and the separation also improved and that was because these ionic liquids have a tendency to participate in the uh, uh, you know separation process and that participation was possible because the polar group of the analyte uh, you know competes with the uh, imidazolium cation versus silenol group of the uh, C18 column. Therefore, this competition the imidazolium picks up the compound more effectively than the silenol of the C18 uh, silenol group of the C18 column and that is why the preferential uh, separation takes makes it more effective and more appropriate. So, this is the kind of mechanism of separation that actually takes place, the role of the imidazole, how it uh, you know effectively pulls out the compound. Then uh, ionic liquids are also used as sensors, but we will not go into too much of detailing of the sensor. It is just for your information that ionic liquids were employed as sensing material of quartz crystal microbalances sensor for organic vapors including toluene, methanol, ethanol, 2 propanol, 1 butanol, acetone, acetonitrile, chloroform, tetrahydrofuran and ethyl acetate. This application was based on the fact that the viscosity of the ionic liquid membrane decreases rapidly because of the solubilization of the analyte and the change in viscosity varies and therefore, it is analyzed by the quartz crystal. It is also used in ionic liquids are used in uh, MALDI, we just discussed MALDI yesterday. I will not go into the details of that, it is just for your information that ionic liquids have great opportunities and great uh, usability, whether it is uh, you know separating compounds or it is doing chromatographic separation or doing uh, uh, extraction in various fields it can be utilized most effectively.